Okay, so um, first of all, I just wanted to thank you guys uh, for having Jeff and I on the call today. It's definitely an honor to speak with all of you, and, and, and we know that you guys made sacrifices to be there. We know that you guys took time out of your lives to, to get together and to focus on building your business and growing together, and honestly, that's a huge deal. That's a big deal. Um, I, I had the pleasure the other day of running into um, Gary Vaynerchuk in the airport, and he wrote this book called Crush It. And the concept of crush it really is trading in your passion uh, to, to be successful in business. That's what the, the book is really based off of. And right now you guys are, are, are trading in your passion to be successful in your business and in your life. So I appreciate you guys being there and putting the hard work into getting to this retreat. Now I am actually honored to be here with you guys because you guys are amazing, but I also have another person who is here with us. That's Jeff Hill, the president of sales over here at Beachbody. Um, so I'm gonna turn the time over to him so he can share a message with you. With you. After he's done, um, I'll, I'll, I'll be speaking with you after that, and, and Jeff um, is gonna go on to some more meetings that he has. So um, Jeff, if you're ready, I'll go ahead and turn the time over to you. Fantastic, can you hear me okay? We can hear you. I don't know, I'm already fatigued listening to everything that Lindsay had those guys do. It was like, it feels like they ran across the world and back already. So I don't know what they're gonna get, what they're gonna get from us, but let me do this. Um, let me just echo exactly what Joe just said. And, you know, first off, let me just say thank you to Lindsay and to Jeff and uh, to Puck, others that, that, that invested in this kind of event uh, to make this, to make this happen and bring people, uh, bring people together. I don't know exactly what you did to get there or if it was just, hey, come join us. We're going to be in Florida, have a good time. But, but just as Joe said, uh, from the standpoint of you investing in your time, of making a choice to be there, um, suggests that uh, you're coming into this with hope, you're coming into this with determination, you're coming into this with vision, and with the aspiration and with the expectation that you're gonna re receive something over this weekend that um, will help you grow your business, okay, that will help you become better. And, um, Here's, you know, the, these are always, I think, um, great weekends. And with all of the activities that Lindsay and others are going to have you do, and I understand you've got some other uh, guests that are either are there or are your other guests there yet? I hear Tulin's back here. You see her? Oh, I can see Tulin waving. Tulin, how are you? Fantastic. Uh, are there other guests that are there? Uh, Christina Delgado and Becky Rosetta are not here yet. They'll be here tomorrow. Okay, coming. so I was going to give them all sorts of kudos as well, but now I'm not going to. So I don't, that just saved me like 10 minutes. So you can just say that I went on and on and on and on about them. And call Christina Christine for me. I did that from stage at Summit and she's not quite forgiven me yet. So I might as well keep that, keep that, you know, keep that going. But, but um, at, any re at any rate, the most important thing that's going to happen this weekend is obviously what you do with it. And, uh, I, you know, I talk a lot, Joe Carden knows this, I, I, I do this little thing where I talk about having a magic wand. And if, if uh, although I'm not there right with you, if I had my magic wand, just happens to be my Uniball uh, pen right now, and could wave over all of you, is that, that, that you, during the course of this weekend, will take a moment when you will find a mirror, when you will find a quiet moment, and maybe that's already built into the agenda when you're going to have that, but where you create a gut check moment of truth as to what it is that you really want to do with what is being placed in, in front of you. You know, most of us hesitate, most of us are kind of wait, most of us dip our toe in the water, and, and I found to the extent that we do that, that that's a, as a result of clarity in our own mind. It's a, it's a result of a lack of vision of what we really, really want and getting clarity for our own lives and where, and where we're gonna be. I was just in uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, and Toronto for our Super Saturday this last, this last weekend. And, and um, I, I showed a picture, and I, it'd, be, it'd be fun to be able to show it here, but I showed a picture of my two youngest kids. And many of you know that we have a large family. We have seven children, if you like to say, they're all boys except six girls. Topher's the one boy. Madison's, the, that, for those that didn't get that, that means there's six girls. One boy should have some kind of picture here somewhere. But Topher's number six, Madison, the baby, the caboose is, is number seven. And at this Super Saturday, what I did is I showed this picture. And I showed a picture of Maddie and Toph when they were probably, oh man, I don't know, maybe, 
maybe four and five years old when they're, you know, just that age where they're like the super cutest kids ever in the entire world, you know, and they got the big smiles and they're, you know, it's kind of like when you're ready to pack them off to school. And I was sharing this moment with them and just saying, okay, here, here was yesterday. This picture literally was taken yesterday or so it felt like. And then I flashed up on the screen a picture of where they are today. And Madison's a 20-year-old, Tolf just turned 22. And these kids are grown up, yet it seemed like yesterday that this picture was taken. And as I shared this picture with them, my whole point of this was, is that life has gone so quickly. Life has transpired like just in the blink of an eye. And what you do today, the decisions you make to do, and then the actions that you commit to following up on are going to make a difference in your life because I promise you, I know that I'm the oldest guy in the room, okay? We could add most of your ages up and get me and that's where we would probably be or maybe even, even add a little bit. So the magic wand moment is I hope what you'd make a decision to do is you hear and feel and sense things. If it's from me, if it's from Joe, if it's from Tulin, I know they're gonna tug at your heartstrings, they're gonna tug at your mind, at your, at your mind strings as well and give you some things, but it's what you do with those that matters. Eight years ago, I started Beachbody, okay? Um, just a little, not quite, not quite eight years ago. Um, but it was about at this time, eight years ago, that I met Carl with my wife in Las Vegas, and we sat down for dinner, and, we, and um, it was kind of that final recruiting thing, do we, don't we, do we make this decision, where Carl looked at me and said, okay, are you in or are you, or are you, are you out on this? And of course, the, the decision was we were in. But let me tell you why um, I made a decision eight years ago. I think, hopefully, if this connects with you in some way, then I think just like I had to make a decision to be all in, you've got to make a decision. You should make a decision to be all in. And that's where your life gets blessed. So as we made this decision, I looked at four things. And it was really, I looked at this company from the standpoint, did it align with who I am, with my values, where I go and what my vision of the future is, and that I could look people straight in the eye and represent to them that I represent a company that stands for something. Um, and I like to describe it in what I refer to as the four L's, to live, to love, to learn, to leave a legacy. And um, here's what I found that I hoped I would find coming in and what I found on the back end of this also looking back, to live. This is a company where I found that I could make a living, where I could provide not only some of the, the necessities of life, but also some of the niceties of life. That if I knew that if I worked hard, if I did things right, that I could provide for my family and that I could do provide for my family in a way that I was proud of and um, that I felt good about. And so I saw the first L was met, to live. The second, to live, to love. I thought, where can I be? And I tend to be a goofy guy, right? I tend to be one of these guys that tends to be very, I'm mission driven, I'm kind of passionate about people, I believe about the best in people and what they can bring to the table. And, and I just think that there's greatness in people that needs to be uncovered. Sometimes it's dusted off or rust, the rust has to get brushed off. But, but to be part of something where you're working with great people, not only that you like, but that you love and that you respect. It's this sense of tribe, what you guys are doing there, this sense of community. So if you can be part of something where you can make a living, where you can be part of something, where to live, to love, where you love the people that you're with and like what you're doing, pretty, pretty crazy. The third L is to learn. If you can be part of something where you can learn, where you can grow, where you continue to push yourself. Um, there's a little video, and those that maybe came out, someone came out to Utah, sometimes I'll show this little video that's called The Law of the Harvest. It's about a potato farmer. It's about a guy in Idaho, this old farmer in blue coveralls that just happens to be one of the most successful be one of the most successful potato farmers in the entire world. He's a multimillionaire, and you're going, who'd like to learn from this guy? And of course, everybody wants to learn from this guy because he talks about the principles and the practices of growing a, uh, a premium potato. But embedded in that is the same principles and practices that are part of growing a beach body business. And so we show this video and we talk about it. And you get the sense as you watch this video that this is work that you know, there's, there's preparation and there's toil and mother nature gets involved and there's wind and there's snow and there's headwinds and you get scrapes and bruises and cuts and everything else. But my favorite scene of this whole seven minute riveting video is at the very end where the sun goes down 
And this farmer looks at the camera and he says, I like the life. It builds character. And to me, this is a company where you learn, where you're learning about yourself, you're learning about other people, you're learning to provide leadership, and the leadership at the first level is to lead yourself, and then it becomes something about leading other people as well. Where else do you get to have this university of learning like here? And I found that third L comes into play. The fourth L, and I'm moving quickly here, is to leave a legacy, where you're about something that's bigger than who you are, than what you are, that you get to put your fingerprints on, on something that's pretty significant. We talk about this idea of putting an end in the trend, that, you know, ending the trend of obesity, something that's so huge, so magnificent so big that we get to be part of that probably something that will never ever you know that completely bring it to its knees but firmly believe that if, if ever there was a company that is the best positioned to do that it's us and we get to be part of doing something that is not only um for us but we get to change other people um we go to a lake every summer up in montana my family does. And ever since I was five years old, we'd go up to this lake. And this year, no different. We were up there. And every day, we take a few moments to sit back and to, um, you know, we, you have to create moments, right? Just like you guys are creating these moments right now. In life, if you don't create moments, it just kind of escapes you. And we had 23 people up there with, you know, our kids, spouses, you know, you know in-law kids and grandkids. And it gets a little crazy. So every night, we would take a moment to have a thought where we assigned it to everybody where they had to say, okay, give us something that makes us think. And it was my night, the last, the, you know, the last night. I was actually the week right after summit. So I left right from New Orleans, flew straight to, up to Montana, up near Kalispell, Montana. Um, my night was the last night. And I'd heard this and I wish I knew who it came from. Um, so I, if I could give attribution to them, um, I would. But I was sitting here looking at this family of ours and uh, you know, been really blessed to have some phenomenal kids. It struck me this saying, it's not what you leave to them, it's what you leave in them. If you leave, leave enough in them, you won't have to leave anything to them. Let me say that one more time, okay? It's not what you leave to them, it's what you leave in them. If you leave enough in them, you won't have to leave anything to them. I think all of my kids in that moment thought that I was going to disinherit all of them and we weren't leaving anything to them because they're going, yeah, dad's just setting us up for this. And, and maybe, you know, maybe so. Um, but it really dawned on me, that's what it's about. What you are doing is that you are leaving stuff in people. You are not only teaching yourself to do hard things and creating this, this greatness, but you're teaching children and spouses and the people that you come into contact with. You're part of leaving a legacy. So to the degree that you can be to, to live, to love, to learn, and to leave a legacy, um, and be part of something like that, there, Covey, a company I used to work with where I got that from, would talk about there's a fire within that comes with the four of those things. There becomes this passion, there becomes this drive. And for me, that's what I found here. And what you need to do this weekend as you sit back and as you look at everything and as you look yourself in the eyes and create that moment of truth, that gut check moment, you need to ask, ask yourself, do my values, who I am, is my long view, is my vision of who I want to become, of what I want to do, the people I want to surround myself with, of what do I want to accomplish in life, does this align with who I am and who I want to, be, to become? And if it does, then you have to make that decision. And that decision is, what am I willing to give up to do this? Because to excel at anything, you have to overextend yourself. You have to be willing to invest in something. We all know that if you put, if you put hobby, if you just hobby this, you'll get hobby type of results out of this. If you treat this like a business, if you learn, the skills of the trade, just not the tricks of the trade. It's in those moments that great things happen. Now, this company was started 20 years ago with Carl Deichler. He had a vision. The network was started 10 years ago um, when he saw that, yeah, we can put stuff on TV and we can sell infomercial things and we can upsell people and get this, this, and that. 
but it's when people start to tell their story, when we really introduce the human element into this, the coach element into this, that this thing started to take off. When the coach was introduced into that, into this business. Over these past 10 years, there's been, this may not sound like a big number, but let me tell you what, it is a big number in relation to so many businesses that have been in, 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 uh, in existence this time. There's been over 100, 145, I just counted up, I think it's 146 people that have had cumulative earnings of a million dollars or more. There's thousands that have earned hundreds of thousands of dollars in this business. There's many, I counted up, you know, how many checks were going out the other day and there's, there's a lot of money that's being paid out. Now, having said that, what comes with that, it's not all about the money, but what it means is that there is an alignment with people that, that are successful and learn this business that can do very, very well. And part of that came as a result of Carl's vision of this company, to provide the very best fitness products, to provide the very best nutritional products, and to provide this aligning, this, this network that rewards people for doing the right things, okay? Now, as Carl will say, you know, it's not always, what we do is hard, okay? I mean, when you sit back and you think about it, what we do is extremely hard. We're asking people to work out, to get fit every day. We're unapologetic about being a company that provides some of the best in fitness, but we know the secret sauce is what? The secret sauce in this business is sweat. It's determination. It's, it's, it's the discipline of working out. The second piece is asking people to find good nutrition and to have clean eating and to do the right things there. And then the third is, as he will call it, it's the little brown scoop of powder that costs four or five bucks a piece that we're asking people to say, in this, in this, there's great nutrition and there's life-changing um, ingredients that can significantly help people improve their lives. And enjoy their lives. Three really tough things to position with people. So, and, and Carl has never backed away from that. And one of the reasons that he, we have never backed away from that is that we know that asking people to do hard things is really at the epicenter, is at the core, is at the essence of where great value is provided. There's no shortcuts. There's no magic pills. There's nothing that you can do to provide those types of long-lasting discipline results in, in, in people's lives. But it requires that we take the long view. And the thing that I love about who we are, and as you look at who we are, um, and, and I'll be the first to acknowledge, this past year has been a has been a transition year. It's been a year when we've transitioned over to we've transitioned over to bot. Our business model has changed a little bit. But I will suggest to you this: that this has been a year where we've positioned ourselves um, for a tremendous future. Because everybody knows, everybody knows that we had to go digital. Everybody knows that we had to provide this this platform. Now we're in the process of saying, okay, how do we provide? better results, how do we provide better financial opportunity for our coaches so that they can continue to earn and as you go out every single day and say, I believe in Beachbody and as you share and recruit and sponsor other customers in, other coaches in, that there's a rewarding opportunity for you at the end of that. And I'll just tell you this is that as you know, if you were to look at uh, what's coming down the pipeline? Next week, we have Clean Week. Um, we're introducing Double Time. Um, we just brought out Daily Sunshine. All of you know that we have 80-day obsession. There's going to be a sneak peek uh, in December. I think on Friday, Carl's going to do a little deal on Friday. For that, that's going to launch, that's going to launch in January. Um, for those of you that attend leadership, um, I know that may not be a, a big number in that room, but you're going to hear um, some new things that we're doing I think that will provide more volume and more earning opportunities um, you know, into the network that I think will be extremely well received. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, really excited about, about what we're going to be launching there. But, but at the end of all of that, um, and I, well, let me, it's not at the end of that. Beyond that, there is a whole pipeline of additional products, fitness, and nutritional that we'll be sharing and that we'll be launching. Our commitment is, again, is not just to provide something that on January 1, it's over. Our commitment is to, is to create a company that 
is here for decades and for generations from now. And I guess what you then have to decide in your moments of truth is, okay, what do I do with that? Am I willing to learn the skills in order to take advantage of that down the road? And there's some of you have probably heard this phrase, and I think it's great. It says, um, it's crazy that some people feel that two to five years in a business is a long time to create wealth, okay? Don't feel that 30 to 40 years at a job is a long time to stay broke. You know, and it's, and it's kind of interesting because I think a lot of times people in this business will look and go, man, if I'm not successful doing hobby type things, putting in just part-time effort, and I'm not doing extremely well in one year, two years, or three years, that it doesn't, that it doesn't work. But yet they're willing to stay at something that, you know, for a long, long time that's not working for the rest of, you know, the rest of their lives. And so what it comes down to then is this, this decision to say, am I willing to put forth the effort in doing things consistently and correctly over time that will create the type of results I love or that will create the type of results that I want in my life? Um, right now I'm on this big bandwagon of, of, this, of this book called Grit. Okay, and, and Joe, you can see that I like the book. Okay, and if I were to open the pages, you would say, you know, that I really like the book. Okay, and the reason I like the book is because if you get to the very front end of or the front of this in the, in the uh, what are they called? Anyway, in the opening pages, it says, this book is a must read for anyone that is striving for success. Not hoping, not trying, not wishing for success, but striving for success. And then what the author does, and I'm not going to go deep into this because I don't have a lot of time here, but, but the author then breaks down what success really looks like and what the ingredients are and the kind of skill sets that it takes and the type of character and the characteristics that it takes for people to be successful. And in this, one of the things she, she starts at the beginning with is she found two characteristics that people who... She, she kind of calls the magic, okay, of success grit. And, and basically the two ingredients in that are people are unusually hardworking and unusually resilient. And they have, and get this, a very, they know in a very, very deep way what it is they want. Okay, let me say that one more time. This is exactly how she says it. They know in a very, very, deep way what it is they want they have direction and they have determination okay in their lives they know what the long view is and then the rest of the book talks about a lot of these pieces but the piece i think that's most critical for you and they should give everybody in this room in these rooms i know you're you're at several places here is that she talks about the importance of effort and of effort being applied and of deliberate practice and how effort done consistently and correctly over time will produce results. And the key, the, just the, 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 the extreme importance of deliberate practice over time, things doing the right things over and over and over and over again, typically while you're alone, that will create those types of, of results or that, that creates the right kind of skill sets that creates talent that, 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 re, that ends up in, in results. And so as you're sitting here again, I wave my magic wand by saying, what is it that you want? And are you willing to pay the price to get those kind of results? Because I promise you as a company that we will be here long into the future. Mel Robbins, who is the author of The Five Second Rule, and she's going to be speaking to us at leadership. I had the chance to sit backstage. I was speaking at another event, and I was talking to her in, in, in Dallas. And we were just, and then we had a chance to interview her before she was coming on, uh, just in preparation for our, you know, for our leadership event. And, and she was talking about, and I thought this was so great, she was talking about the importance of doing, and she said, you know, most people look at, look at confidence as a personality trait. And she says they couldn't be more wrong. 
And I thought what struck me on this, why this idea of confidence and have self-limiting beliefs was, was so key was as Carl did his I'm here to help group. I asked him at, uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a call one time, I said, Carl, what was your biggest finding from this I'm here to help group? And he said that people have these self-limiting beliefs. They have this, this sense of lack, they have this, this lack of confidence in what, they can do, in what they can do, and he was surprised by that. Mel Robbins hit this on the head, and she made this comment. She said, it is not, self-confidence is not a personality trait. Confidence is a skill trait, is a skill set that can be learned through doing, okay, through action through putting forth real effort. And she says, what happens is, she says, you can tell when people are struggling with self-limiting beliefs because they do one of four things. And I thought these four H's were really good. So this is a moment for you to kind of look and say, am I? Maybe this is a little bit of, a, of something, that trap that you fall through if you're, not, if you're uh, lacking some self-confidence right now. But she said, there's the four H's. She said, when people lack self-confidence, which is usually a result of them not doing things, is that they feel helpless, okay? That they're, you know, that they're feeling victim to something, okay? That they don't know what the answer is, and typically that comes from not doing, they feel helpless. They hide, okay? They'll hide behind doing things that aren't productive. They'll not show up at meetings. They'll not come to, you know, get on phone calls. They'll hide behind doing things in social media that aren't very productive. They'll hesitate. Okay, and anything instead of one of my favorite phases is sometimes you just have to jump and build your wings on the way down. Um, but that's a but but you, but you'll hesitate instead of just jumping in and learning as you go. And then the fourth one is they become hypercritical that the problems out there, the problems not not within. And so she made the point in the short call that we had. She said. I'm going to talk about how those four pieces sometimes are evidence or traps that people fall into, but all of those can be overcome by doing, okay? Can it be overcome by putting forth effort against things. One of the, I, I'll just kind of end with a couple of, the, couple of just little thoughts here, but there's a great book called Change Anything, and it's, again, it's about creating habits of success, and um, I it, 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 they, this little story kind of sets it up first. There's a story they, in the book they talk about, about a, a tourist walking through an old, beautiful village. And they, it was full of character with old streets and houses and buildings. And they came across this old ancient man sitting in a park. And he stops and, and this tourist asks this old man, he said, old man, are there any great men that were born here? Okay. And the old man said, no, only babies. <sighs> Okay. No great men were born here, only babies. What's the moral of that? It means that great men, great women are developed. They're just not discovered. And as I've looked at great coaches, if I've looked at these people that have become great, there's, there's always some defining characteristics. And one I think is that they're curious, always curious, and they're always doing. Um, in this book, Change Anything, it talks about one of, the, one of the characteristics of success is that these successful people have the ability to take, to turn bad days into good data. What does that mean? What that means is that they may have one of those days, they've run a challenge group, it sucks. They've done an invitation, it sucks. They've done a post somewhere. They get no likes. They get no interaction. They, know, they get no you know, engagement. They, they try any number of these things, and they don't turn out quite like they had hoped that they, that they would. What these successful coaches do is they bring this resilience and this curiosity to it, and they go, on one hand, man, that was a bad day. That didn't work out the way I thought it would. But what they do then is they look at that and they say, how do I turn that bad day into good learning, okay, into good data that I can improve on? And so they, they're curious, they try, they put forth the effort, they, they, they're experimental, and then they rinse and they repeat, and they rinse and they repeat. 
and they keep refining and they keep refining and refining and they're consistent and they learn over time how to do things better and better and better. The good news for everybody in this room, the great news for everybody in this room is that if you make the decision and are willing to put forth the effort and stay consistent with it, that you will learn the skills that develop into talent, that develop into results. And that's really, you know, what it takes when, when all is, you know, when all is said and done. Here's the other thing that I've learned, maybe just wrapping, you know, wrapping up. Um, let me read this little note I got today and then I'll say this other thing. It said, I, I'm lucky enough to get some of these notes every once in a while from people. But it said, Jeff, what can I say? It's Friday morning, but it could be any day of the week. I'm so giddy that I feel like my heart may explode. Excited about the lives I'm changing, the team that's building, the dream that's materializing right in front of me every day. Every facet of my life has transformed over the past year and a half, so much so that I can't fit in a card. Let's just say I'm a completely different mom, I'm a completely different wife, a completely different daughter, sister, and friend. I could never express in words the gratitude I have for, for you and Carl and the entire Team Beach Body Company and this opportunity. Thank you for leading with such, anyway, she goes on to talk about integrity and heart. Um, and uh, thank you for the ripple effect that you're creating in the world. I'm so honored to be part of this, of this company. This is a person that started the business about three years ago. And is somebody that honestly I wouldn't have bet on. I wouldn't have put my money on that individual because I looked at him and I thought, I don't think they've got what it takes. Okay. I don't think they've got the skill set. I don't think they've got the talent. And what I've learned over time is that, man, you never bet against anybody because if you have the heart, if you have the determination, if you have the drive and you're willing to sacrifice for those things that will create results, um, I know that you can do some pretty remarkable things. And so I've just learned, don't bet against anybody in this business. The last thing I would say is that I want you to know that my role, Carl's role, Michael's role, Joe's role, the people that are on the headquarters, the corporate side of things, our responsibility is to make sure that we're making decisions, sound decisions that will create something, a company that you can be proud of, that will be here long term, and is that you put your effort in, as you put your skill sets, skill sets into this, um, that there will be something significant for you. And um, if, if you guys get any sense for Carl, you know that that guy is all in all the time. I've never met a more focused, more determined, more passionate, more visionary guy in my entire life and his dedication to you as coaches and to this company and to making a difference in people's lives. It's that long view that he has, that vision, that clear, compelling vision that he has. I think that not that I think that I absolutely know fuels the fire in this company, the, the, the fire in this company. And it's the piece that, that drives the everyday activities that helps us push through the hard spots and you know the turbulence as you get them that helps us just over, overcome those, those pieces. And um, I'm excited to be working alongside of him, working, happy to be working alongside of you guys who every single day are going out there and putting your names on the line, putting your courage on the line, you know, trying to change people's lives. And it's a pretty, it's a pretty cool thing. So thank you for being coaches. Thanks for coming there. Uh, I can't see everybody in the room who's got, I think Lindsay and Jeff, for, you know, for, for being leaders and putting this together, make the most of this time. And hopefully you guys will make decisions that will drive your future. So thanks so much for letting me join you for just a few minutes. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, definitely awesome to be able to have Jeff here. You guys probably don't know this, but as far as making sacrifices are concerned, Jeff had a surgery yesterday, <laughs> and he's and he's and he's you know he's in pain. He's probably just 
coming off the pain medication right now. No, I'm honestly, I'm just going on the pain medication right now. So, it, so anyway. the fact that he's able to deliver something like that to you guys is really special. And, and he's willing to be here and talk with you guys just on the heels of going through something, you know, so difficult. Um, I feel blessed every single day. Like, I don't know what, you know, I, I wouldn't say that I'm the most religious person on the planet, but I literally thank God every day that I'm part of this company that I get to work with people like you, that I get to work with people like Jeff, like Carl. There's other companies that I've been in before when somebody like Jeff will speak or somebody like Carl will speak and you're thinking, how do we, how do we get in front of this damage control? <laughs> how do we, how do we, how do we uh, recuperate from what this person's going to say? But I never have to worry about that when Jeff speaks, when Michael speaks, when Carl speaks. It is a wonderful thing that we're being led by a company that with people has vision and truly cares about other individuals and making a difference. Um, so Jeff, thank you so much. Um, we know if you need to, if you need to head out, uh, then, then you can go ahead and do that. But we're, we're so grateful for your, you know, for you to be able to jump on with us today. So thanks. Yeah. Okay guys. So um, I am going to be talking to you guys a little bit about mindset today. Um, I want you guys to, to uh, bear with me a little bit though, I wanna share a, a, uh, my screen with you guys really quickly and just show you an image. Uh, Coach just sent this to me today. Um, can you guys see that okay? Raise your hand if you can see that, all right. Can you guys see it? Okay, yeah. perfect. Um, so these four coaches here are coaches that I met in Minneapolis Super Saturday. Um, all four of these coaches have lost over 100 pounds through Beachbody, okay? Um, Jeff kind of shared a little bit about why he jumped on uh, the Beachbody ship uh, in, in the beginning. And I'm going to share with you a little bit about why I did uh, and why I continue to be here day after day, month after month, year after year. Um, I joined Beachbody because of Super Saturday. A friend of mine asked me if I wanted to show up or if I wanted to work here, actually. Um, and I, I, I was like, I don't know. Tell me about Beachbody. He's like, well, we've got this product. It's called Shakeology. And, and he didn't do a great job of selling it, to be honest. And I was like, one, that's expensive. Two, that sounds kind of like a weird name. Um, and he was like, you know what? Just go to a Super Saturday. And if you like it, you know, we can, we can go from there. So I went to a Super Saturday and I saw coaches just like these four who had had their lives transformed by Beachbody, by Shakeology, by peer support, by fitness. And I realized at that point in time that the results were real, that what you guys do is significant and that it changes lives. In fact, I was sitting at my, I was sitting at my house the other day and I started looking around my house and I was asking myself, what products do I have in this house that have changed my life to the degree Beachbody has? And I couldn't think of one, guys, not even one. Right? I mean, I haven't had an earth shattering transformation, and it's not all about earth shattering transformations. What it's about really is helping people live a more healthy and fulfilling life. It's about going out there and making a difference. Right? I, I mean, I'm like 20 pounds, 25 pounds down, but I've never been in a more healthy spot on a mental standpoint. I've never been in a more healthy spot um, from a physical standpoint um, or a, sp a spiritual standpoint for that matter. Honestly, um, you, what you guys do makes a difference. There's never been a time in the history of our country when people have need our, needed our products more. Think about the, what do I try to say here? Think about the social expectation of what you should look like versus where we're at right now. We've never been at a more obese level than we are today, but the social expectation of what we should look like has never ever been higher. Heart disease is the number one killer of people in this country. Type two diabetes is running rampant. We've got all sorts of these things that are happening right now and you guys are the soldiers going out there and fighting all of these issues in people's lives. Honestly, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to me and I, I get emotional every time I come to Super Saturday because I see what you guys do and I know there's a need for what you guys guys have got going on that will continue for decades, right? So first of all, thanks for what you're doing there. Now let's just jump in a little bit about the, the mindset thing, right? 
So I'm kind of a, a history nerd, and I, I like watching documentaries and YouTube things and stuff like the History Channel and all that. And somebody that I've always looked up to is George Washington. Um, and I was studying about him. Studying sounds kind of nerdier than it was. I was, I was watching a, a YouTube video about him. And I, I realized he lost way more wars than he won. Okay? George Washington lost, quite, he lost way more battles than he won. I guess I should say it that way. He lost way more battles than he won, but he still won the war. Okay. Um, and what I want you guys to think of in your business is I want you guys to think of it at like set in your mind that you're going to win the war because honestly, you're going to lose some battles sometimes. And if you lose a battle and you send up the white flag and you retreat, you're never going to win the war. Right. Um, you got to think of it almost like Shalene Johnson talked in Ohio at the Super Saturday in Toledo. And, and she said, stop running sprints. When you're running sprints, what you're gonna do is you're gonna tire yourself out and you're gonna be exhausted and you're not gonna go as far in the end than if you were to just run a steady race. She said, There's, it's not slow and steady. You know, and nobody say anything about slow. You wanna just run a steady race, right? And as you run a steady race at a pace you can sustain, that will take you much, much further. So focus on the long game. Right. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier that I ran into Gary Vaynerchuk at the airport and I read this book, Crush It. And one of the things that he talks about in the book, Crush It, is being patient. Right. He's like, and he said this at Summit. You guys saw him speak at Summit. He said, it's silly. So many coaches think that they're going to be sipping a coconut, you know, drink out of a coconut on the beach someplace after six months of work. And life just doesn't work that way. It just isn't that way. It doesn't ever work that way. Right. Um, so, so being patient, keeping the long, the long game in mind. And I wanted to share with you guys a story, honestly, of something that happened with me recently that really drove home how important mindset truly is. And I 100% attribute this experience to me working at Beachbody, to me reading personal development, to me being involved with amazing people like you. Right. And I don't, I'm not sharing this story to brag with you guys. So I'm not trying to be braggadocious. I just want to share the story with you guys because it really is something that affected my life in a powerful way. I mean, in fact, it was almost a spiritual experience for me. So what it was is I started cycling this year. Uh, my brother brought a bike to a family reunion. I went cycling with him and it was like addicting. I was like, dude, we covered some serious ground in like not very much time. And I really loved it. So I, I bought a bike. And my brother was talking to me about cycling. He said, you know, there's this race that my friend's wanting to do, and I'm thinking about doing it. And it's called Lodija. This race um, is 203 miles, and it goes through three states. And he was talking about doing this race, and before I knew it, it just flew out of my mouth. And I don't know why, but I said, if you do it, I'll do it. And then I was like, whoa, did I just say that? I just said that I'd do this 203 mile race. So it's basically the equivalent of running two marathons back to back, right? And I just felt sick in my stomach and I was like, oh, what did I, why did I say that? And my brother said, yeah, I'll do it, let's do it. So I'm committed at that point. Um, so I start training hard, I start going on ride, rides. Here's a, here's a key piece. I find a team of people who are willing to do have similar goals that I do right? We want to do the same thing I'm wanting to do. Um, so we start riding. I prepare all year for this thing. And the day comes of the race and I get to the, the starting line and I'm feeling sick. My brother, you know, I, oftentimes you can feel sick at the beginning of a starting, at the beginning of a race, right? From nerves. But I had just stayed with my brother whose entire family had stomach flu. So I'm feeling all the stomach flu issues. I'm, and I'm like, don't, tell me that I put a whole year's worth of effort into this race and it's all going to vanish now because I've got the stomach flu. And I, and I started having all these negative thoughts go through my mind and I'm thinking, put all this time in, there's no way you're going to be able to do it. Your race is going to be destroyed. You're, no, you're not going to hit your goal. Now, at the beginning of the race, all I wanted to do, I mean, at the beginning of the year, all I wanted to do was finish the race, right? But as I put the work in every single day, I started seeing the vision. 
of what I really could do, of what my capabilities are. And I realized I have much more capability than I initially thought. And instead of just having a goal to finish the race, I had a goal to finish it fast, to do it in under 10 hours, right? So all the stuff seemed to be flying away from me at that point in time. And something just hit me. It just stuck in my mind. It was like, Joe, you can sit back and complain and think about what, what all is wrong, or you can choose to have faith. You can choose to believe that you still got this and you can push forward. What are you going to do? And I decided I'm going to, I'm going to choose to have faith. I'm going to choose to push forward. I'm going to choose to be confident that I can still do this. And it was complete mindset decision. And every time a negative thought would come into my head, I'd shut it down and say, I'm going to choose to, to, to believe I got this. And within an hour, all the symptoms had gone, right? So we had these waypoints you had to hit by specific times in the day. And um, the team is feeling good. I'm riding with guys who've done this race before. Every, everybody's smiling. It's all good. Um, until we reach our first waypoint. And we're nine minutes behind where we should be. And all the time, all of a sudden, those smiles were not smiles anymore. And people were saying, why are we doing this? Why are we pushing so hard? I've never, had, I've never been this tired in the race before. There's no way we can do it. And it was this negative Nancy attitude that was going on. And again, that mindset clicked in my head. You can choose to be part of, of, the, of the complaining, or you can be ch and, and, and all the negativity, or you can just choose to have faith. You can choose to push forward. So I, I was like, guys, we got this. You know, we've never got, we've never done it this fast before. We can still make it happen. We still have a lot of race to go. Um, and we talk, we're talking with the team. And by the time we reach our next waypoint, we're right on time. So smiles are back, right? Um, we continue pushing forward to the third waypoint. And by this time, my team's behind me. And I wait for him at the waypoint, and they're like, Joe, we don't know how much more gas we've got in our gas tank. Like, we don't know if we can keep up this pace. So I was like, okay, let's push together, and we can see if we can make this happen. I'm just going to pedal, and you guys just ride along, you know, in my wake. So in cycling, the, first, the guy that goes first is pushing the wind. He's got the hardest job, right? And the people behind him are drafting. Um, they have maybe 30% less effort. And it's like you as leaders, as you, as you blaze the trail, as you push forward, your team follows you. They don't have to figure out how to do everything all on their own because you've, you've created a lot of those trainings, right? So we're pushing forward. The team's a little bit behind by this time, a couple minutes behind. I'm riding along, you know, and I'm like, hey, I'm feeling confident. And all of a sudden, my rear tire pops. And I'm like, this is not happening right now. <laughs> I was so uh, deflated, no pun intended, right? Um, and my team flies by me. I'm like, keep going. They're tired. I knew they didn't have time to help. So I'm, I'm behind schedule. My team is now gone, and I'm all by myself, which is hard in cycling. And I got a flat tire. So again, that voice came into my head saying, okay, what are you going to do? Are you going to give up or are you going to push forward? By this time, I'm about 130, 135 miles into the race. So I jump off my bike. I, I change the tire really quick, put in a new tube, pull out the staple to pop my tire, put it all back together. I jump on my bike and I'm riding along and boom, second tire pops. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me right now. <laughs> Is this really happening? And, and it was hard for me, guys, to keep my morale up. At that point in time, my goal of finishing the race in less than 10 hours felt like it was almost impossible. It was, it was this serious internal conflict I was going through to keep my mind where it needed to be. And luckily, I don't know if you guys have read the book, The Secret or not, um, but basically the concept is you put it out in the universe and things will work out for you, right? And I, chose, I said again in my mind, I'm going to choose to have faith. I'm, I'm going to choose to believe that I can do this. And right as that was happening, a support vehicle pulls over to the side of the road and is like, hey, can we help you? And I was like, uh, yes. <laughs> Actually, I have a flat tire and I don't have an extra tube. Do you guys have one? Yep, here you go. So I, they gave it to me. I popped it in, put it all back together and started sprinting. 
Now here's the, here's the part that was difficult. In my mind, I'd made up the decision that I was gonna keep pushing, even though I knew I was by myself, I knew I was behind the eight ball, I was way behind schedule, I didn't have my team anymore, but I made the decision to push forward. And it was a suffer fast, guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. I had about 65 to 70 miles left to go, and I just decided I'm gonna push as hard as I can, and I wanna catch my team, and I'm gonna finish in under 10 hours. So I'm moving along, I'm pushing, I'm riding as fast as I can, and I'm thinking to myself, I can't sustain this. Like, this isn't something I can do all on my own. I need other people to ride with. I can't push the wind at this speed the whole time. And in my mind, I said, sooner or later, you're going to find other people who want to run with you. You just keep going as fast as you can, and somebody else, you'll find somebody else who's going to go just as fast or faster than you. And I just kept pushing. And sure enough, some stud just keeps, you know, just passed me, and he was going, he's going pretty quick, and I was like, there's my ride. <laughs> so I jumped on his wheel and we just took turns. We took turns pushing and we pushed as hard as we could, guys. Like honestly, by this time, the headwinds also started coming. So when headwinds come, it's like one of the worst things in cycling. It slows you down because it's a force, an extra force pushing against you to, slow, to keep you from going faster. But we kept on pushing and cramps are happening in my legs and I, I've never had those before and I'm experiencing all of these pains and, and, uh, but I just kept telling myself, choose to, to believe that you can do this. Choose to believe that you got this. And I, I kept pushing with this guy. We, we crossed the finish line all together. And I ended up finishing at 959.43, right? So, <laughs> well, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. So it was literally like one of the most incredible experiences of my life, but it was also one of the most challenging experiences of my life. And, and honestly, I attribute being able to push through all that to having a positive mindset of being able to push through trials, of being able to still choose to believe that you can do it even though you're experiencing headwinds, even though you've lost your team, even though you know, you've got flat tires. And guys, right now in your business, I know that you guys are running into obstacles. But here's the thing, you're gonna run into obstacles in any business, right? I was looking at, at, these, at some of the most successful businesses out there, um, there's, it's just amazing to see their story. Like Apple's one of them. Um, Apple is one of those companies that they've had amazing, amazing products that have come out, but they ran through tough times, right? And they ran through tough times. They fired Steve Jobs, like a, an amazing innovator, because things were not good. And they ended up having to hire him back, and they ended up bouncing back and all these different things because that's business, right? But there's one thing that I want you guys to really understand in internalize, know it backwards and forwards. And I want you guys to bring this back to your team. I want them to understand this concept and I want to be an integral part of what you do day in and day out in this business, okay? And that, that con this concept I'm gonna share with you guys right now will open up your income pipeline. It's gonna open up your rank advancement uh, opportunities. It's going to open up your recognition opportunities through this company. And more than anything, it's going to help way more people. It's going to change way more people's lives. It's not a secret. You guys have heard it before and you guys already know about it. But I want to make sure that you've taken this concept and really put it in the place of, in the spotlight in your team. So that, so, so that they're plugging it in and they're running with this as well. And that concept is duplication. If you, you saw the picture that I, saw, that I showed you guys. Our products work very well. They answer a need that so many people have in this country right now. So we've got that piece of the puzzle figured out. So many companies have to struggle with that. I look at all these new companies that are popping up that are promising all these cool things. I'm not worried because we have longevity in this company. We are hard wearing because the need for our product and the, the bright, shiny object um, fascination that some of these com companies have is gonna wear off. Whereas our product's gonna continue to deliver over and over and over and over again. So in the end, this duplication piece is gonna be a big deal for you guys. The duplication piece will open up income for you guys. The biggest pipeline of income that you guys can earn through Beachbody is gonna come through Team Cycle Bonuses. 
okay? But here's something that I see all the time, and I want to make sure that you guys are avoiding this, this pitfall. I go out and I talk to coaches. I was just in Indianapolis. I was just in Dallas. I was just in, in Chicago and these other places, and I talk to coaches over and over and over again. And I, and I talk to these people and they have no idea where their pipelines of income are coming from, okay? So if you guys were to sit down with your kids or with your significant other or with a friend and start playing a board game, but you didn't read the rule book first, would you expect to win? No, you would not expect to win. In fact, you will lose. So, so what I want to challenge you guys to do is understand how duplication really plays into your business. Go out, my homework assignment for you guys today is to print off the Beachbody Compensation Plan Highlights Guide, understand it, know it, internalize it. Make sure your coaches understand that as well, okay? Make sure that they really can internalize it and execute on that in their business because if they do, their pipeline of income will grow, okay? And, and here's the thing, when it comes to duplication, I was reading a book the other day called Start With Why from Simon Sinek and something just hit me like a ton of bricks. And he talks about the celery test. And this is such an important thing that you guys need to make sure it uh, is working in your favor in your business. So he says basically there's a guy and he's a nutritionist. He's all about health and, and nutrition. And he's passionate about that so he starts to sell celery. And things aren't as great as he, want, as he wants it to be. And then all of a sudden his friend comes up and says, hey, look, dude, it's all about Oreos right now, man. I'm selling million, I'm making millions through Oreos. And then another guy comes up and says, dude, it's all about M&Ms right now, man. That's where it's at, M&Ms. This person is about health. And Simon Sinek always says, it's not about what you're selling, it's about why you're selling it, right? that makes the difference. People don't buy what you're selling, they buy why you're selling it. So if this person was to go sell Oreos, if this person was to go sell M&Ms, he's not gonna have success because he's not passionate about that. And that's not in alignment with who he is and what he believes, right? So when you guys go out there and you're having duplication work for you, you wanna find people who pass the celery test right? People who are passionate about helping other people, people who are passionate about li you know, living a healthy lifestyle, people who are also passionate about working from home, right? About, about having the freedom to be with their family, about potentially making some more money through helping other people. If they pass the celery test, they're going to stay active for longer and they're going to grow, right? Um, so we, we, need to, we need to get that concept of duplication, like we need to get the water to the end of the row, so to speak, right? All the way to the last coach, the, the, the very next coach that you guys sign up, they need to understand that and internalize it in their business. And, and here's, here's the thing. So many coaches, when they sign up in this business, think, well, all my answers to my problems will be over once I hit diamond. And, and that's not the case, Right. That's not the case yet because you're not tapping in to those pipelines of income yet. You're getting really one pipeline of income in this business. And that really is your retail commissions. You're, you're getting a little bit maybe through your team cycle bonuses at Diamond, but really not much changes for you. So the challenge I have for you is to make sure that you guys are getting out there and duplicating. There's two different phases in this business that I like to talk about. The first phase of this business is called the I do phase. I sell challenge packs. I help people. I read my PD. I do my invites. I recruit. I do all of these things, right? And I see coaches all the time who have tons of elite points and they're doing all of these things to a high level. But the problem is they're not making as much money as they'd like to, or they're not rank advancing, or they're not getting the recognition things they'd like to see. And that's because their team is not doing those things right? The moment your team begins to do those things as well, and you find people that pass the celery test, you're opening up your potential to really blow the doors off of this business. So as you get those people, as you recruit more people who are doing the same things you are doing, you are going to go into what I call the we do phase. Now, think of it like this. If you had 
all of all the finances in order. You had the land, you had the plans, you had all this stuff to build your dream home. But the only caveat was you had to build it yourself. Nobody could help you. Would you be able to lay the foundation of your house? No, that's, that's not a one man job. Would you be able to do all the framing, the electrical, the plumbing, the flooring, the finish work, the painting, all that stuff? Probably not. I couldn't do it and I'm a handy guy, right? Why? Because some things require a team. Building success, building a solid foundation through Beachbody is not something you do on your own. Like I just talked to you about how excited I am about Carl and about Michael and about Jeff and how we have these amazing leaders in this company. And while they're amazing, they didn't build all of this on their own. There's hundreds and potentially thousands of people that make the wheels go round in Beachbody that make this $1.3 billion company happen, right? So thinking that you can have success all on your own through this business is really a fallacy. You've got to have a healthy crew of people that are gonna help you build this together, okay? Um, now, the last thing I wanted to do as far as talking to you guys about building success through your business is just being you, okay? So recently, um, I've been talking with coaches whose income have gr has grown from last year compared to this year and who found success this year, who's rank advanced, who's done amazing things. And I asked them all the same question, questions. And, and, and honestly, something that just came up over and over and over again is when they found success is when they started truly being themselves. And that book, Crush It, just talks about the same exact thing. Follow your passion. What are you about? Like, who are you? Whenever you, once you figured that out, like what you want and who you are, push, push forward. You will achieve success. Now you may have to adapt. Social media changes every day, guys, right? So I was thinking about this the other day. The definition of, of, of being crazy is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result, right? So with social media changing every single day, we need to be able to adapt. We need to be able to find new things. We need to be able to go out there and look at different ways and be creative to get the same results we need. Why? Because we know we got products that work and we know people need it. The only difference is how do we reach those people? What's our delivery method? And I'll tell you guys, I'm not a genius. I don't know. I don't know all the time. Like, and, and, and neither does any of the coaches. You talk to some of the top coaches out there and they're trying new things all the time, figuring out ways to adapt and figuring out ways to do things differently to reach more people, to change more lives. Now I can promise you, if you guys go out there and you have a positive mindset, you will attract more people. People will want to follow you, right? If you're somebody that's passionate about what you do, you're having fun and you're thinking about, you know, what it is you want to do, if that's helping people, growing your business, whatever it is, if you're confident and passionate about those things, you will find success in this business. And in the end, you just got to be who you are. So guys, that's what I've got for you today. I'm so grateful and honored to be here with you all. Thank you so much for having me here. Thanks for making the sacrifice in your lives to be here at this moment. So um, Lindsay, Jeff, Jason, Heather, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Joe. We appreciate you so much. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Hope you guys have a fantastic time down there in Florida. We'll see you later. Thank you. Bye. Thank you yep. so much. Thanks, Joe.